One cold and bitter Thursday in Munich, Germany. Eight great football stalwarts conceded victory. Eight men will never play again who met destruction there. The flowers of English football, the flowers of Manchester. On the fringe of a Munich airport lies the wreckage of an airliner, still smouldering from a crash in which 21 people were killed. Tragedy enough at any time. But in that plane were a group of young men who were almost the personal friends of millions. Manchester United, the finest soccer team Britain has produced since the war. Busby's babes, as they were affectionately called, were on their way home from Belgrade when the disaster struck. They were on top of the world. Their three-goal draw with Yugoslavia's Red Star team had put them through to the European Cup semi-finals. They had high hopes of the English FA Cup. Now those hopes are snuffed out. Three days before, the press had carried pictures of a confident team leaving for Belgrade. Pictures which remind us that with them were eight of the North's finest sporting journalists who would never see home again. The Munich air crash on this day, February 6th in 1958, was a tragedy that touched the lives of millions, not just in Manchester or in Britain, but here in Ireland and beyond. Harry Gregg, Manchester United goalkeeper, a record signing from Doncaster Rovers to United, was on that flight home from Belgrade, where the team had just sealed their place in the semi-finals of the European Cup with a 3-3 draw. The flight took a scheduled stop in a snow-hit Munich Rheim airport to refuel, and what happened after has been recounted many times over the years, the last week, and will be again in the coming days. Although he played a huge part in the story of what happened at Munich that day, Harry Gregg would rather remember the good times he enjoyed with the players that made up the famous Busby Babes. I'm delighted that you mentioned that we were playing in a quarter-final of the European Cup and we're through to the semi-final. Absolutely, yeah. After yeah. a 3-3 three, three draw. And I would want to talk about the good times because everybody wants to talk about, and I'm not being on time when I say that, the bad times. I would like to remember the victory uh, over, over all the tie, three apiece, and a group of really, really happy and talented young men at a banquet that, fall, that, that same night after the game with the Red Star team as well going on towards the early hours of the morning and I had joined just a couple of months before so I was basically follow the leader and at the banquet I watched Roger Byrne the captain, wonderful fellow living or dead, wonderful person write something on a napkin and pass it up the leg of our table to the top table to the boss and I said to Jackie Blanchard what's that all about? and he said He's asking the boss if some of us can go out for an hour or so after this banquet because it's going on very late. I watched the boss open a napkin, draw on his pipe, nod his head, and that was a bye. You're allowed to go out. Some of the lads went to the British Embassy with the, uh, the, the crew of the aircraft. Others went looking for a nightclub. And a group of us went back to our hotel, the Majestic Hotel, Majestic by name, and a wonderful hotel in the communist country at that time, and sat down to play poker. As I say, I had travelled a fair bit with Northern Ireland, but hadn't travelled as much as the, the lads that I joined. And uh, we were playing cards, and I was doing very well at the card school. Well, I thought I was, but they were putting in Yugoslav dinners and taking out my 10 shilling notes. So we, uh, I made sure that my fair share had a good, good run at it, and well into the early hours of the morning, as I say, one thing I would mention very much, I forgot it, at the end of that banquet, now you were both teams, because in those days you did have a banquet. And I well remember there were three Yorkshire lads in the team, Big Mark Jones, Tommy Taylor, and David Pegg. And towards the end of the evening, there they were, they could have been Irishmen, but they were Yorkshire men singing on Ilkley Moor Batat, on Ilkley Moor Batat. To me, that is, those are the things I want to keep fresh in my mind the really wonderful, happy feeling in the atmosphere before we set off the following morning for uh, Munich. Matt Busby's boys were flying, returning from Belgrade. This great united family, all masters of their trade. The pilot of the aircraft, the skipper, Captain Thane. 
Three times they tried to take off and twice turn back again. The third time down the runway, disaster followed close. There was slush upon that runway, and the aircraft never rose. It plowed into the marshy ground, it broke, it overturned, and eight of the team were killed when the blazing wreckage burned. Roger Byrne and Tommy Taylor, who were cap for England side, and Ireland's Billy Whelan and England's Jeff and died. Mark Jones and Eddie Coleman and David Pegg also. They all lost their lives as it ploughed on through the snow. Big Duncan, he went to with an injury to his brain. And Ireland's brave Jack Blanche Flower will never play again. The great Matt Busby lay there, the father of this team. Three long months passed by before he saw his team again. The trainer, coach and secretary and a member of the crew. Also eight sporting journalists who with United flew. And one of them was Big Swifty, who we will ne'er forget. The finest English keeper that ever graced a net. Duncan Edwards injured, Bill Fuchs injured. Mark Jones killed. Ray Wood injured. Eddie Coleman killed. David Pegg killed. Dennis Violet injured, Tommy Taylor killed. Roger Byrne killed. Bill Whelan killed, John Barry injured. At the time of going to press, Matt Busby was fighting for his life. Seven players lost their lives at Munich, and another Duncan Edwards, a Colossus, the finest English player of his or any other generation, according to those who were privileged enough to see him play, lost his battle for life in hospital 15 days later. An Irish international was among those that died. Harry remembers Dubliner Liam Whelan. Now, we can all be wonderful in hindsight and yeah. say beautiful, flowery things. I have never been known to be a patronizer in my life. I'm not going to do it now. He was a gifted, wonderful player. Slight of build, slight build, huge in ability. A charming, charming fellow. Apart from being a wonderful, gifted player, the number of goals that that fellow scored as against appearances made is incredible to this day. He was terribly nice, terribly decent, good living fellow as well. And they, they were an exceptional bunch of players. Players like uh, Duncan Edwards, we hear so much. He's been eulogised so much down the years and he's become a real figure in Manchester United, a real legend like Best and Law and Charlton. How good was Duncan Edwards? Well, I'm going to answer you that in the same way as sadly my Jackie Blanchflower, who was part of that squad, he answered it better than anyone when he said... Uh, when he was asked the same question about the talent, the overall talent in that group of players. And he said, my answer is, look at the reserves sitting on the bench that day. And the reserves were Ray Wood, England goalkeeper, whose place I'd taken for the time, uh, Liam Whelan, Republic of Ireland, Johnny, Bear, Johnny Berry, English international, David Pegg, English international under 23, and Jeff Bent and Jackie himself. I think that speaks for itself. And when you when you go back into history and realise the day that I played my first game for United, Matt Busby dropped five players, five international players, and brought in another five, myself being one of them. The reserves went to Barnsley the same week with nine internationals in the second team, all of the same age. Of the 44 people on board European Airways Flight 609, 23 perished on that fateful night. Of the 21 that survived, many owe their lives to Harry Gregg, who dragged bodies from the wreckage in spite of the danger to his own life. But even after all these years, Harry himself is not comfortable with the title of hero. i tell you what it is. I was a schoolboy international... 1947, captain of my country with Jackie Blankflower in the same team. I was a youth international 
and made the first visit to Europe and played in Cannes, Monte Carlo, Monaco. I was an amateur international. I played against English league for the Irish League in the full international 1952-53. I would rather be, that's what I'm remembered for on my good days and my bad days. I have this great feeling that, heaven forbid, but if you and I or you and someone else are involved in some incident, on one day you will run and the other fellow will stand. The next day you might stand and he might run. No one can say what they're going to do. I don't want any 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 part of the, uh, for want of a better expression, I don't want to have the John Wayne part. I can do without that. Oh, England's finest football team, its record truly great. Its proud success as mocked by a cruel turn of fate. Eight men will never play again. Who met destruction there? The flowers of English football, the flowers of Manchester.